Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about why it's important for setting intentions for your online dating. Since we are going through a pandemic and we are forced to stay inside, we're still adapting to our given circumstances and that comes with online dating. More and more people are going on the online dating scene in the hopes to meet someone that they can fall in love with. And there is some pros to that. Some people might feel uncomfortable walking and approaching someone in person and sending a text message or reaching out through your phone or through the internet is a little bit more comfortable. It could take the pressure off of you of approaching someone in person. You can really craft and write interesting messages and you have more opportunities to meet other people. Although as an Asian male, we are working from a disadvantage when it comes to matches and success rate. In 2014, the co-founder of OkCupid provided some statistics about race and attraction. And he wrote that user data showed that most men on the site rated black women as less attractive than women of other races and ethnicities. Similarly, Asian men fell at the bottom of the preference list for most women, while the data focused mainly on straight users. And that stat definitely sounds pretty demoralizing and sad. It was 2014, so about six years ago, and that was way before Crazy Rich Asians came out. And what that meant for me, being an Asian male, is that I had to work twice as hard being on dating apps. I had to create the best thoughtful descriptions and I had to be dedicated with my time. And it does suck. I wish I could say that if you put in the hard work, you will get what you deserve. At this point, we know that's not the case and we live in a world that isn't perfect. So whether you're an Asian female that gets fetishized or reached out consistently by creepy dudes or an Asian male, that has been on dating apps for years and has been experiencing tragic results, you can still benefit from setting intentions in your dating life. And for everyone that is not online dating and still meeting people in person, this is still applicable to you. And I just wanna provide you a framework that you can work from. And why is setting intentions important? I truly believe that the energy that you put out in this world is what you will receive. For example, a common time when people do use online dating apps, and I am guilty of this as well, is when we're using the bathroom. And if you're using the bathroom, room while you're swiping in hopes to meet that special someone, then most likely you're gonna get some shit results. When I first started online dating, it was after a breakup and I set my intentions for hookups only. I intentionally wrote out a template that was sent out to everyone that I've matched with. And that empowered me because I didn't care if they unmatched me or ghosted me or just didn't respond to what I was saying. I understood what I was signing up for and I didn't feel insulted when that happened. It's not like I knew them for over 10 years or anything like that, it's just someone I've matched with maybe 10 minutes ago. And when you don't figure out what you want in your dating life, your confusion will attract confusion. It becomes a frustrating process when you don't know what you want. Instead of putting all the power in their hands, we are empowering ourselves. You have to control whether you swipe, you have control how much you want to pay at, on the dates, you have control whether you want to text them back, and acknowledging things that are in control. And this brings me to step one, figuring out what you want. Do you want a hookup? Do you want a committed relationship? Do you want marriage? Do you want just something physical? Truly give yourself full time to brainstorm. And when you're brainstorming, do not settle. A common thing that I hear is, why not give this a chance? There's nothing else going on with my life. What's the worst that can happen? With that being said, don't settle for the cherry when you want the apple. Then you're gonna act like cherry behavior. And in the end, it really is a distractor from what you really want, and that is the apple. And without knowing what you want in the end, you really set yourself up for disappointment. The pleasant surprise is not the rule, but the exception. And after figuring out what you want from online dating, that brings me to step two, take action. What we must do to give us the best chance to achieve what we want. Now we've figured out what we want around online dating, now it's time to set up your profile. And for me, I had to work twice as hard because of my personal experience. And now knowing some more statistics, this better helped me understand what I needed to do instead of being discouraged. Get input from friends that are from the opposite sex who have seen multiple profiles of their own. I would ask friends who are women to look over my profile to see what their thoughts were. This gives you another set of eyes and a different perspective and see how you can improve on your own profile. When you do go live, set some time in the day to swipe instead of swiping throughout the day. Just like you schedule time to set other activities throughout the day, it's the same thing for dating. Put some intention behind your dating. Write in your calendar when and where you're actually gonna be using your online dating. Schedule for how long you're gonna go, a start and end time to create some boundaries for yourself. Just like you're scheduling, going to the gym. 
you have an hour and that's it. You don't work out before that and you don't work out after that. You do that for an hour and then you leave. And hopefully once traffic starts coming in, now that you have a decision of what you want to do and you have a choice. I would still have to make sure when to say yes to something and when to say no to something because times when I was feeling very low, I wasn't getting any matches or I wasn't feeling very uh, confident, I would say yes to everything. And when we get hung up on why not, why not just do this, then this really lowers our priorities and distracts us from doing what we really want. And I'm not Naruto and I can't split into five different Kevins. And when I choose to say yes to you, that means I am saying no to so many other things that I can't do. And there's a lot of power in that, prioritizing who you want to actually engage with. And try your first strategy for a couple weeks, and if it doesn't work out, you're always allowed to switch. Maybe try a different app, um, asking more friends to take a look at your profile, change up the photos, change up your description. And the most important thing, putting out who you are instead of putting out things that you think people want to see. Because in the end, they will want to see your own uniqueness and your own personality. And never stop working on yourself when dating is not going the way you want. There might become a day when you meet someone spectacular and after waiting five years on hopefully meeting someone, you might feel emotionally stunted because you didn't have the opportunity to work on yourself when you had the chance. Take the time to learn about your relationship patterns with family and friends and how you want to be treated. And by getting to know yourself in relation to others, you don't need a relationship to figure all this out. From a national survey that was conducted in 2019, from a pool of about 4,800 people, 50% of Americans say relationships that begin on a dating site or app are just as successful as those that begin in person. So be patient and compassionate with yourself. You matter and you will be okay. It's just a matter of time that you will come across someone that you really enjoy being with. Thanks again for checking out this video. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to see more content like this. I am going to continue to push out content on mental health, physical health, and overall wellness. Thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.